probability part one hi i'm daniel susan and welcome to aptitude academy today's topic is probability now to understand probability we should know the definition the definition of probability is said to be the likeness of an event to occur now probability is not the answer it's just a guide but probability tends to be the answer when the sample space is infinite now to understand that let's carry out a simple experiment all right now the most daily occurrence of probability would be tossing a coin you usually toss a coin when you have to make a decision and you want it to be fair and random right when you toss a coin you'll have two outcomes either a heads or a tails now one of these will be favorable to you now i'll show you this experiment by tossing a coin but that would be too boring so let's try something different have with me a bucket and i've got two of these plastic balls right let the green one be heads and let the yellow one be tails all right I drop them in the bucket and i'll shake them around. right now if i ask you what is the probability that when i pick up a ball it will be a green ball it will be a heads what would you say probability gives you the answer is 50% but as i said before probability is not the answer it's the guide right now probability will tend to be the answer in an infinite space now let us keep a sample space as 10 right 10 tries now 10 is a finite number so let's see if probability gives you the answer or it's just a guide one green two yellow three yellow four yellow five green six yellow seven yellow eight yellow nine yellow then green now after the experiment we see that the yellow ball came up seven number of times and the green ball came up three number of times but probability would have us believe that if you would pick up a ball it would come up to five times and five times but this is the scenario for an infinite set now here we've taken a finite sample space of 10 tries now as math would tell you if you would increase your sample set to more like suppose if it was 1000 it would probably tend to say around 450 and should be 550 right as the sample space goes on increasing now suppose it tends to infinity right half the number of times that is 50% it will be a green ball and 50% it will be a yellow ball now if you repeat this experiment you probably won't get 7 and 3 but you'll get a different number you might get 5 and 5 but that just means you're really lucky all right now let's write the generalized formula for probability now, suppose e is your events that are favorable to you like in the previous case when i uh, held the bucket with the balls right the green ball was the event favorable and t is the total number of events or the total number of outcomes that is possible then the probability of event e happening will be the number of times that e can occur upon number of total events right now for the previous example with the bucket right we just had one event that is favorable right out of the two balls the green ball right the green ball and the yellow ball we just had two of these right so we wanted the green ball so if you had so uh, n of e the, the probability of that event occurring would be how many times can this happen only once right one ball is green so one what are the total number of events you could pick a green ball you can pick a yellow ball so there are two events so 1 by 2 or 50% but a very important thing is probability is never written in percentage percent is percentage right probability is always considered between 0 and 1 so your probability will be 0.5 so probability always lies between 0 and 1 it can be equal to 0 and it can be equal to 1 if your p of e is equal to 0 that means the event never occurs and if the p of e is 1 that is the event always occurs so now an example for p of e is equal to 0 
would be if I toss a coin, what is the probability that it will stay midair? Zero, it will land. And the probability that a coin will land after you toss will be P of E is equal to one. Understand probability better. Let us take the example of the bucket. Now on the board, I've written a couple of probabilities that could occur. Now the event favorable to us is a green ball, right? So P of G will be equal to N of G, number of times a green ball can occur upon N of T, the number of balls that are there in the bucket, right? So the number of tries. Now let us see what is P of G is equal to zero. P of G is equal to zero. That means the event never occurs. Now if the bucket is empty, right? I'll add yellow balls, three yellow balls. So whatever ball I pick up, it will never be a green ball, right? So that is P of G is equal to zero. Now P of G is equal to one. What, if, what is P of G is equal to one? P of G is equal to one is that whenever I add, whenever I pick up any ball, right? It will always be a green ball. So if I've added all green balls, whatever I pick up, it will always be a green ball. That is P of G is equal to one. It will always occur the event. Now, what is P of G is equal to one by two? That is 50%. So 50% is like the example what I quoted earlier. One of them should be green and one of them should be yellow, right? So now there's a 50-50% chance of me getting a green ball when I pick up at random. Now, next one is two by three. Two by three, now you've got the hang of it, right? The number on the numerator will be the number of green balls and the number on the denominator will be the total number of balls. So now for two by three, I need two green balls. Okay, I've got just one and three total balls. So now I've got one green, so I'll add another green. So I've got two green balls and totally I've got three balls. So that is two by three probability. Now for the final one, let's go to two by four. Two by four is two green balls, two green balls and the total number of balls is four. Now I've got two green balls and one yellow. So let's add another yellow. So now I've got two greens and two yellows. But if you see this, two by four is in fact one by two. So it's the same thing. So even if you have 50 yellow balls and 50 green balls, it'll cancel out and it'll become one by two, right? So the probability of you getting a green ball, even if there are 100 yellow balls and 100 green balls will be one by two. All right, now that you know the basics of probability, let's solve a simple sum. Problem one, two unbiased coins are tossed independently. What are the probabilities that A, we get at most one head, B, we get at least one head, and C, we get just one head? All right, now when you're solving problems in probability, you need to read the statement very carefully, right? Now in this example, we've said that two coins are flipped independently. Now, your space of results, that is your coin space, is the number of cases that you could have when you flip these two coins. Now, these, now each of the coin has either a heads or a tail. So the number of possible cases that could happen is this. You could either have both of them heads, or the first one could be heads, second one could be tails, or the first one could be tails and the second one could be heads, or both of them could be tails. So you basically have just four scenarios that could happen. Now, what is part A? At most one head. So what is the probability that the coin toss, right, will have at most one head? What is at most? At most means maximum, right? So maximum one head. So what does maximum one head mean? One head or less than that, it's fine. So which of these cases has maximum one head or no heads at all? So you've got this one, no heads. Okay, so that's one. This one, right, one head. Okay, one more. And this one, one head, okay? This one has two heads, but we want maximum one head. So it's three, right? So now your probability P of E here will be number of favorable cases, three upon number of total cases. So four, so three by four, right? Now, at least one head. At least one head means minimum, minimum one head. Right? So now let's check it out. Is head head have at least minimum one head? Yes. So here, this one has one head. Yes. Here, minimum one head. Yes. Here, no heads, but we need at least minimum one head. So here again, P of E will be three by four, right? Three times you can have minimum one head and out of four tries. Now the last one is just one head. Now, which of these has exactly one head? number two and number three, right? So you have this two scenarios where this happens. So P of E here will be two divided by four. Now P of E three by four is 0.75. Here also 0.75. Here it is 0.5. This is your answer. 
All right, so this is part one on probability where we saw the basic definition and we saw how it applies to the real world with the help of the bucket experiment. In my next video, I'll explain to you what are dependent and independent events and tougher problems based on these two concepts. If you found this video helpful, do like it and subscribe to my channel. I would also appreciate it if you tell your friends about this on Facebook. Thanks. Subscribe to my channel to get all my videos as soon as they come out. Do help other students as well. Spread the knowledge.